Okay, my name is Juan Luis, I'm a journalist. Uh, it, it is true that I have a mixed profile because I'm a journalist, but I mm, have been trying to do my job inside big media for the past few years with some of the colleagues who were very disappointed by how uh, mainstream media were working, mainly on social issues, mainly on human rights issues at the beginning, and eventually in political and social issues too. So uh, at the beginning, uh, I was part of a previous project who was focused on migration, human rights, uh, internationally speaking. Then we bumped it to some new ways of protesting. Uh, so uh, actually, I, I thought at some point that was a coincidence, but then I realized that was the same story for a lot of people uh, taking part in 15 m We were running out from politics. We didn't want to talk about institutions, political parties. Uh, we are fed up for that. Uh, they don't represent us. Okay, and suddenly we became we, we became like the most polit politicized generation in 30 years, and we are now talking about new politics, new parties, and the people. Uh, with we with whom I share this square are now ruling the cities and, and uh, are candidates for being president of the government and is quite crazy in just four years, right? Um, today we will talk. It is difficult to you know refrain to jump to the institutional part, but I I, I think we, we we can focus on. Uh, from uh, even that, that same debate, but from the perspective of, of, of the of the 15 M movement of the protests and revolts, um, and I think it's very interesting to talk first of all about the timing. This happened 2011, uh, just after Egypt revolts. So the timeline is southern Morocco protests in Sahara, Tunisia. Um, Egypt, Spain, all that in the same, I don't know, six months. Then uh, that inspired or re inspired the previous protests in Greece, so they began even to uh, use the same slogans and chants that we were using in the squares in 2011 in Spain. And then Occupy Wall Street. I, 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 I'm sure you're not tempted by that logic. But a lot of people out there in the, in the United States and Northern Europe think that Occupy Wall Street was the first thing ever. But it is not. Um, actually, Occupy Wall Street was, was kind of small if you compare it with Spain, if you compare it with Greece, if you compare it with Turkey, if you compare it with some other countries, Brazil, if you compare it with a lot of revolt protests that somehow are connected one to each other during those two years, 2011 to 2013. And why the timing and that connection is important because actually we're talking about, I think, uh, um, common rules and behaviors and tools and frameworks and words and language for all those protests. Um, in Spain, People that, that, that bumped into, well, people that jumped into the streets, that gathered for days in those squares, were not uh, part of any party. They were not uh, even part of traditional or already existing social movements. Um, there were people that have, hadn't participated in any uh, traditional political platform. Uh, actually, if you take there was a poll, and this poll said more than the half of the people were not affiliated to any organization. And the other 40% of people that was affiliated to an organization were affiliated to an NGO, not trade unions, not political parties, uh, no social movements. NGOs uh, working on human rights, NGOs working on poverty, NGOs more known as Greenpeace. International Amnesty, but also NGOs like Neighborhood Assistance and in the outskirts of the of the city, and also, which I think is also a common denominator for a lot of protests, people more focused on the commons in the city than in the mm, 
geopolitical uh, uh, confrontation of who do you support Russia or do you support Obama, right? People not thinking about that, not thinking about Venezuela, Cuba, uh, Russia, Iran, um, France, France, not thinking about that at all, but thinking more in uh, the banks in my town, the uh, big company who is polluting the water, or the, the kind, that kind of, of, of stuff I, I know that you're familiar with. So uh, that was kind of a generation, people our age, uh, whose elder brothers or parents or uncles or whatever were part of traditional politics because they actually achieved democracy in Spain 30 years ago, so they are like very proud of that. And after that came a generation of people very detached from that. We were like fed up of this success speech of, oh, what a good work we did, everything is perfect. Spain, Spain is a huge and um, wonderful country. Nothing has to be changed because, come on, you young guy, I've been there. You will grow up and understand politics, one for one, the state works. And um, actually, the country, the values, and the ethics of politics were collapsing, not only because of the corruption, even because of the social democrats' ideas in Spain uh, were banished. Imagine what happened with leftists also banished, and everything was like banished, and the neoliberalism were like taking the whole place. Right? Um, so, what, 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 sorry, my English is. Uh, what did we do with that? I mean, we, how we decided to participate in society? Through little uh, devices or little platforms who were gathered in the internet. So we, when we were, and I'm making a, like a general description, but it's, it's quite fair for the whole generation of people I'm talking about, we were like this geeks, freaks, guys doing things in RC, uh, IRC, ICQ, uh, Messenger, uh, chats and that stuff in the virtual world. Um, so actually in Spain, the, 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 the importance of the internet is very is, is, is huge because people began to participate politically, this is before 15 years, politically participating through the internet, through Twitter, Facebook, uh, through forums, through chats, uh, and that was not that wasn't visible to the mainstream media. That wasn't visible to uh, traditional parties. So the, the common uh, the common idea in Spain for ten years was young people are not interested in politics, and and, and then happened this, this happened because we were like relating to each other through channels that traditional politics couldn't understand because they didn't pay attention to. Uh, so that's why in Spain, for instance, we had a, like a huge confrontation to one intellectual poverty law, you know, Acta Sopa. Uh, the, the equivalent of that in Spain, that was like the huge protest in the internet. Like everyone was against the, the Spanish version of, of, of Sopa. And traditional politicians with some uh, good, uh, yeah, with some reason, right, said, come on, this is the huge problem you have. I mean, this is the, the the biggest problem you have in the in, in the life that this this law. I mean, there are a lot, a lot of things happening, and, and you put, and you come together and, and make your 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 voice sound because of that internet and downloading shit. And I was true, but at the same time, what was happening is that people were, you know, hiding in the internet, and then the power came into the internet and tried to uh, make some rules and. In the, in, the only, in the only place where people felt like free and kind of natural and kind of exchanging knowledge freely, right? And then Wikileaks came and Anonymous in Spain has a huge impact in the, in the beginning and, and kind of that protest began to bring people out of their rooms. And uh, it is important, I know this is like too much background on the internet side, but it is important because the uh, 15th movement succeeded because of the 
digital storytelling of that that bypassed uh, media, traditional media uh, attempt to portray it as radical, dangerous people. Uh, the a very, 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 very sophisticated way of working in the internet, already trained for years because of that, of what I'm talking about, uh, managed to bypass that. So, 2011, we have 40 cities in Spain with this image for two weeks at minimum, one more and a half camping um, in, the, in the city. So, uh, it, it was a, a, a demonstration asking for a real democracy. Uh, this is like the subtitle of it, which is, which is um, we are not uh, goods in the hands of politicians and bankers, so we don't want to be just commodity for them. We don't. We we want a real democracy against politicians and but against the financial power, which in Spain is a taboo because they they have the power. So you, you can't talk about banks until that moment. Uh, so this is a lot of people in Madrid. The first, the, the very first demonstration. The important thing here. Uh, is that there were no party saying let's go to the streets, there were no uh, trade unions there, there were no NGOs, there were and it's no. Actually, when I came to this street and exit from the underground station, I saw the mood and said, whoa, 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 what's going on here? Because you could perceive that it was different. I mean, there was not other, yet, yet another demonstration on social issues, it was different. People uh, went home after this demonstration. Everyone. Everyone but 40 persons. 40 people that decided to come. And uh, those 40 persons to decided to come, the first person to grab them, the, the mic, or the megaphone, you say that? Yeah. And said, okay, shoot, shall we come here? This is the first guy. This is Miguel. And uh, yeah, you, you can't understand Spanish. I, I assume, I'm sorry if any, any of you does, but basically I'm asking him here, why are you here? I mean, who are you? And why uh, are you here? And, and he's explaining to me that he has seen what's going on in Egypt and uh, kind of tried to copy the format, uh, export, again, technology, uh, metaphors. Uh, and a free software of protesting, right? You get the, the, the software of protesting in Tahrir Square and you try to adapt it as a plugin to your protest. And, uh, and they say, okay, we're trying to be here until the elections. And I was kind of, come on, you are like, you see, <laughs> 10 people. You're not going to be here until the election day, which is in more than a week. Uh, they, they were there for a month. Uh, this guy, Miguel, is now the director of participation in the government of Madrid. Um, two days after I was talking with this guy, this was the aspect of the square, that same square. I, 48 hours after. Okay. Uh, I was doing this. The quality of the image is bad because this is recaptured from a streaming signal. I was doing a streaming with this phone, with the previous one. And uh, so I, I streamed this for five hours. Five hours. So I got my mobile phone and I tried to open the application for streamings. That, at that moment, I was on just one app, uh, use trip. And started to stream. That's it. I mean, no, no, no big merit on that. Started. And then suddenly, a little large, like thousands of people started to watch this. And so I was walking around the square, talking to people, very, doing, making very simple. You're not saying, why you're here, who are you, why do you protest, are you a radical, and then your person, as mainstream media say. And somehow it was counter 
journalistic because it was so relaxed and so you know informal and that's why it worked I think There's a lot of people started to share the things that were happening in the, in the images and people began here to put some cartoons in the in the in the square to camp so that grew a lot that night that was the biggest moment of the of the camp right and uh, This is just important to to show one of the examples. Obviously, I was not only the one doing covering that night. Uh, that's just one example how we try to go around the, me the ma mainstream media to uh, force them to talk about us. They didn't talk about the movement until this picture, also with mobile phone and not very good one. I mean, Sam. So, okay, this is not bad. This picture, New York Times took it from my timeline and published. And uh, also uh, another video that I recorded from a balcony. And also a uh, more, this is another image. So they, they started to publish, the international media started to publish uh, footage and, and images for the Spanish protests and understanding and describing it much better than Spanish media. So at the end, Spanish media had to say, okay, 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 and make you like a huge uh, miss functionally uh, journalism, so I had to react somehow. Uh, okay, so I am not going to the details of the company because four, four years after that's uh, only nostalgia. Uh, but yeah, they were there for a month. This was the first night, by the way. These are the 40 people who spent the, set, the first night there. Uh, but the thing is that they, they, they tried so hard to to be there, to stay there as a, as a you know as a speech itself. We are here. We are occupying the the square. That actually they had no energy for anything else. So being there became a problem because it full of all the energy. So at some point they managed to leave with a lot of internal problems because people were living there, people with no political intentions joined the party. A lot of people here, a lot of cute girls and boys. Ah, I'm going to do yeah. uh, This for me is like the symbol of it. <laughs> people making like tents with doors. Um, so they they started to dismantle the camp. And that was a tipping point because, you know, this whole this energy focused in uh, one place for more than a month. You are like the king of the mainstream media, even when they're talking bad about you, but you get that energy and do a judo uh, movement and use that energy against them. So every, every, everyone is laughing at the media. And, every, and, and day to day, more people are participating in, in your in activity. So it's a big, a big success in, in quantity and in quality because, according to the polls, by this time, uh, for the first three, four months, even after the campaign, 80%, 85% of the people, the total population of Spain, which is more than 30 million, were, were agreeing, uh, agreed with. Uh, 15 people. So that was like everyone, right? Everyone was watching TV or watching Twitter or listening to their daughters and sons telling them, no, 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 it is not what you're reading in El País, which is the main newspaper. It is this and this and this because I'm participating. I'm, I'm participating now. And that was amazingly hype uh, moment for for the moment. For the moment. So that was kind of hard, how to get that energy and move forward without being in the square all day, like sit, expecting something to happen, right? Uh, the answer to that was a second phase. Okay, this is very nostalgic, but I can't go all with the media and not play that. <laughs> this is the silent scream of every night, uh, every, every night at midnight. People yes, get silent and this. Okay, yes, yeah, sorry. sorry. Um,
So yes, this is, this is the, the answer to that problem. Where to go? What to do next? How to channel that energy in another project that make this survive? Housing. In Spain, we had a huge problem with housing. Uh, I think you can, you know, understand why is the problem. Uh, what is the problem with housing when you have a high unemployment rate? Uh, there is a detail of the Spanish law, which is uh, uh, which is if you can't pay your home. You have to, if you can't pay to the bank for the mortgage, uh, you return your keys, but in Spain, you still have the debt. Okay. This is something that in Spain we didn't realize was brutal. You have to talk with people from abroad <laughs> and see his reaction <laughs> and understand, okay, this is not like. This is not good. So you have no job, three children, you're a migrant. So if you don't work, basically you lose your residence uh, uh, papers. You can't pay your home, you give up. You say, okay, okay, I can't pay. This is my home, take the keys. And the bank says, okay, thank you. Now you owe me the same amount plus the interest that you didn't pay and plus the interest of not having paid so you basically are out in the street like literally out in the street with no money to try to begin from scratch because actually all the money that you have has to go to the bank so that is also about black economy or under copper economy or whatever you say that in English and uh, of course, that is a social drama and a social injustice, like very clear, right? Was not that clear at the beginning. All this I'm explaining to you had to be explained four years ago to the Spanish people who didn't know that, who didn't, haven't, rea we haven't realized how bad that was. Um, so, one week after the uh, and this is like strategically very interesting. One week after the uh, dismantling of the camp, <coughs> uh, the camps, uh, started what it is called in Spain, Plataforma de Afectados por la Hipoteca, which is like uh, victims of the mortgage right? platform. They were working years before that, but yeah, at that moment, 15 the movement said, okay, these, my canyons are for you, right? So all the energy came to that. So this is the first eviction stopped by this platform in Madrid, a week after the camp. The, if I want to play a video, which is quite clear. This is like two years after that. So, but this is quite representative of the thing. So. Police and a uh, public employee come to your house to ask you for the keys and you have to leave, okay? You know that previously because you, you are born next Monday and you are going to go there so you have to leave and I show this, you have people from the courts, uh, people from the ownership of the building or the flat you're not paying for, police. What this platform do? This platform gets 40 people at the door of the house to prevent police to enter. That's it, okay? So they put their bodies, like literally, to protect uh, the person who is living there, who is inside the house. So this is the house of, uh, of this person. Of course, they are old people. Of course, they are people affected by cancer, Alzheimer. Uh, you know, all the, all the drama you can imagine that, that, that is part of the reason why don't, you don't pay enough, right? Uh, so they try to block the, this, these doors to prevent the police to come. Um, and, as you see, every, in every eviction, well, not every eviction, in every eviction they participate, they have a camera. They have 
one, two, three cameras, independent journalism or even media activists uh, recording the, the whole thing, right? So there you have people in the, in the door, police team. It is not a guy police, you have to really know, it's like anti-riot equipment and let's go for it, right? So, they begin to detain people, of course, they begin to make this peaceful resi uh, resistance at the door, police trying to get into the building, get into the... And this is the person who can pay, we look at the door. So this is like this every time. Right? Uh, sometimes you have a lot of people in the door, sometimes not that much people, some of well, them is different cases, but it's more or less all the same. So this time they couldn't stop it. This woman had to, to leave the house, the family had to leave, and the house came back to the, the bank and they still have the debt. Uh, I would say to you, find in, uh, in YouTube, this is eviction in Spanish, the Saucio, and uh, this guy here, uh, Jaime Alecos, which is a uh, video journalist doing mainly this, and you will find lots of uh, very absurd circumstances and, 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 and cases, but more or less it's always the same, the same uh, thing. So why this is working <laughs> if, if they don't uh, achieve to stop? Well, they are actually, they have stopped hundreds of evictions. Uh, and at the beginning they couldn't stop any, but little by little they started to stop a lot. Why? Because, you know, 40 people in the, in, in the door, but that is easy for police. One, two, three, I mean, we've seen demonstrations with thousands, and they could, why not, with 40 people in the door. Because every eviction they do with that kind of resistance is a, a, a lack of credibility in the mainstream media. If you see that, and the day after you see that, you see that, and the day after you again see that, and mainstream media began to worry about who is the person, the person who has been evicted, the story, the personal story. So at the end, it's like you can't do that. I, mean, I, I don't mind if, if she's or, or he is paying or not. You can't do that. So, as one Spanish philosopher said, it is not those forty person who are stopping the eviction. It's the whole attention of the society uh, who who are there because. Those evictions are already stopped before the police come because the, the people are symbolically are aware and are looking at that moment and if that happens, like a lot of anger will uh, be there uh, after, after it happens. So this platform, doing this every day, sorry, this and psychological uh, assistance for the victims, and legal assistance for the victims, and they negotiate with the bank, and they try not, I mean, it's not only I'm here, oh, we've lost, I go on, but the day after and the day uh, before, they, they are, and mo during months, they do assemblies with them. It is not experts that attend victims, this is like an assembly of victims. So it is, if you can read about this project, about BAH, B-A-H, uh, read about it because it's strategically brilliant. The methodology of how they spread for the whole country without having any structure is brilliant. They, they elaborated some documents, uploaded to the internet and said, okay, if you can do this, you are a pa. You don't, have to, you don't have to ask me for anything. You do this, you can use the name of pa. So again, free software uh, protest exporting and lots of PAP appeared in every city in Spain doing this job. Um, and it's very interesting because it's like a very tiny 
issue, well, not tiny, but a, a, a very concrete issue, which is mortgages, who has become like a symbol for the whole system of social injustice. So, because of the evictions, we have been talking about the banks. Because of the evictions, we have been talking about the courts. Because of the evictions, we have been talking about the politicians that don't want to rule back or to, to retreat that we brought that law that said that you get the debt even if you uh, handle in the, the keys. So, thanks to, so in every country, I think that there must be one little thing that allows you to channel off the energy instead of making the whole thing, uh, no, making the, the speech about the whole thing. Uh, it is much more easy that even mainstream media accepts talking about the bank if you go this way, that if you say banks are neoliberals and um, the, the system is against us, and it is much more strategic to go through this kind of uh, uh, yeah, a strategy than going uh, uh, with all of it with the front because they won't let you in. Um, uh, by the way, this is one of the evictions. Okay. Uh, this is one of the activists there in one of the evictions. She's now the mayor of Barcelona. Much better position. In a much better position. Yes, yes. And she's hitting the stuff. Yeah, actually, now, now she is the boss. She is the boss. Well, not this, not this special, but yeah, she is the boss of the people. You see this picture? This guy is the director of digital communications in the uh, <laughs> of local government in Madrid. <laughs> it is amazing. Right? <laughs> uh, uh, another, 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 another. <coughs> but I, I want to talk about this guy later. Um, okay, you see this guy? With a wheelchair, posing some counter threat to the police during a demonstration, like putting his body in the front line, you know, to come on, he's not for me. Excellent. My wheelchair, come Excellent. for me. Well, he's, the, he's elected uh, as a council member of the government in the last local election. And uh, um, for the transparency uh, and also participation uh, branch of the government. Um, he used to be a hacker, hacker like hacker, a true hacker. He's not like, um, no, hacker. And, uh, okay, so. This is also interesting because it melts um, the borders of ethnicity and migrant issues, uh, which in Spain are totally different from here, so I'm not making any parallelism, but in Spain uh, we have a, 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 a growing population of migrants and uh, for a few years, uh, you know, the, the racism was kind of a risk. Fortunately, the Spanish is not a racist, racist uh, or xenophobic uh, society. Uh, but it is not because of this, partly, because the way of the way in, in which the social speech was built was in but by these kind of uh, activities were, that were not saying we are defending the flag of an Equatorian woman or defending the flag for the Spanish person. Or the, the, we are defending the, the flag of this guy of the period. And most of them were migrants at the beginning, because migrants were the, the first ones to, to feel the, the heat of the crisis. Uh, but we didn't make a difference, and somehow in the neighborhoods they 
become aware that my problem is not this guy who is stealing my job. My problem is the bank. So uh, that reshaped the public speech, the speech about the crisis, and prevent the risk of uh, uh, xenophobic frictions and, and that stuff. Um, okay, so uh, you have housing, okay? But not only is housing, housing. They developed uh, or, 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 or the idea of protesting or the revolts, the, the, the spread thematically. Housing was the, like, the biggest thing because it was the more effective uh, and the more symbolic. But then you had demonstrations on uh, national health care system with mainly doctors and nurses. Uh, Nurse, nurses, uh, the nurses on, yes. is male and female, right? I'm not being. Yeah. And uh, nurses, doctors, and, and sanitarians, generally speaking, but also patients. So you have no trade union focused protest, but community based protest. So I am the doctor, you are my patient, come with me, with me to the demonstration. It is not you are cutting, making austerity cuts of my job, so I protest. It is, uh, my job is not the important thing, the important thing here is your health, so we go to the demonstrations. It's just a narrative issue, because actually they were protesting against the cuts, but making that narrative not of trade unions uh, defending the jobs and against the cuts, but making this approach from the community affected by those cuts was a huge success. And uh, managed something that in space, for instance, is very rare. We saw doctors, surgeons, protesting in the streets and blocking avenues. Surgeons, those kind of doctors in, in Spain are like middle high class and they don't think about anything but their own issues, right? So they don't participate politically, they are even conservatives, they vote conservatives. So conservative party in Spain really is scared a lot when they saw, okay, this guy that earns 60,000 uh, euros a year is blocking the avenue protesting against me, we have a problem here, right? So they had to withdraw the whole privatization of the uh, national uh, public health system. And they withdraw it. I mean, they had to uh, do it. So, well, for some months, moving forward, for some months, uh, this, this is all we managed. I mean, uh, we had these concerns that we, did, we didn't have about the system thanks to 15M and the PA, but government didn't react. Then we had this little victory about private, partial privatization of the national uh, system, health system, but nothing else. So for two or three years, it was demonstrations, 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 huge demonstrations. This is like, I don't know, four months after 59 or five months or, and, and in the, the year after again this and the year after again this right so it was the momentum works very very long but then you can see that this you see there's a lot of demonstrations of this kind but nothing happened actually uh, so um some independent media began to work a little bit. Uh, of course, you can, like, if you have any questions or you don't understand or agree what I'm saying or whatever you please say. Um, so we have this huge uh, revolutionary moment in the squares who was not radical left shaped at all. It was more an uh, act of recovering the common sense. Uh, it was more like, okay, okay, okay. I'm not saying that 
but you are bad, but mm, actually the most interesting thing is this happened when the allegedly centre-left was ruling the, the, the national government. It was not against the conservative government. It was when centre-left was ruling the, 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 the country. And actually, it, this is like, it's like a, a protest against the way the left has been behaving for the past 30 years. It's like, we can't win if you are like that. I mean, I mean those are the enemy and you are not that enemy, okay, but you have to behave in a different way or you are like counter, not revolutionary, counter normal sense. Normal sense. I mean, decency, right? So, and, and, and the left didn't react. Nor the center left, nor the, the traditional left, the Communist Party in Spain. Uh, they didn't react at all. I mean, it was like, very shameful to see how they tried to make some little movements mm -hmm. to make you think that they had understood the thing like that they did. And it was a complete disaster. Uh, so, activists, uh, was it, the end of it, or, or, or the, the second part of it, it was the first part was everyone was in love with the 59 movement, even media began to love this in the movement. Uh, every week, the now mayor of Barcelona, the activist that you saw, uh, was in TV. Uh, they called her to talk about evictions, banks, corruption, whatever. Uh, she stayed always, always she, she stood always in, in her topic, uh, but somehow she became very popular, very popular. And so, so it was like, profitable for the TV to bring her because she gained audience and that makes money. Uh, that, that happened for six months, uh, over a year. Not only her, but several very aggressive, let's say that from their purpose, I mean, very, very tough leaders from the activists and from the social movement, the new social movements, were on TV for six months. In a, in a TV show of, 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 about debate and that stuff. And the show was cancelled. When the show was at, at its peak of audience, the government, and, I, and I'm not making conspiracy, I'm telling you what happened because I know it, is, it happened, the government asked this big media group to cancel the debate because they were smashing the government, and they were, actually. So, they cancelled. Three, three months after, another TV channel, the, 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 the country, said, okay, let's fill that gap, and began broadcasting the same format, very similar. And in that format, they began to, to bring to the studio a guy called Pablo Iglesias. Uh, so, and the rest is for tomorrow. Uh, so, uh, somehow the media attention grew and grew and grew because power felt that it was a you know, moment that would pass very quickly and not threatening actually the, from the, 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 the essence or the, the fundamentals of, of their system. When they felt some risk, they stopped for a while, but it was so popular, people were so with them that, you know, those things, five minutes, ten minutes were so profitable to them. It was the, the audience, so it's, it's amazing, it's pure liberalism <laughs> against uh, power. And, and the power which is liberal discovered that the more profitable thing is against, <laughs> against liberalism. So, yeah, so funny. It was so funny to see how they were like crazy about this, not not, not knowing how to react. Uh, and of course, that is hegemony, and that is, that, that is very well studied and, and described, like theoretically. But when you see that in, in, in day to day, it's so funny. Uh, and the whole thing again was 
the whole thing about partially the reason is that even when they are not on TV, this speech, this new left or new social movements or new common sense or whatever you want to call it, was being very well worked in social networks. More better well worked in the social networks than in assemblies, but also in assemblies. And, you know, it was like a social uh, fabric ready to uh, take advantage of any opportunity. And uh, what will happen next is that government didn't react. The center left tried to make some gestures. Uh, the left tried to make some tiny gest gestures. But the government, which changed, now we're talking about the conservative government, didn't react at all. So you have these huge demonstrations, these huge evidence of people thinking that you are doing a non-democratic government, that you are against the people and stuff, and they didn't do anything. That's part of the personal behavior of our president, which is like, I close to myself, I wait the storm to pass, and it's working for me, actually. Um, so these activists say, okay, I am against the parties that have been, have been like 10 years saying uh, I'm an activist who has always said outside the parties, outside the party, let's press from outside, let's stay with the social movements, not being a party. But I've been participating in the most intense protest I will ever see and we didn't manage anything. So, I, I don't have any hope in this happening again in five years and have a second round. This is it. The government made a blo institutional blockade. Not only government, but parties, established parties, even when they say they are our friends, are also making an institutional blockade. So, oh my God. I have to start thinking about a party. And that was two years ago in different groups, very different groups. Uh, I know that you have in mind Podemos, and we'll talk about that tomorrow. Uh, and I know that you have in mind that uh, Barcelona and Madrid have been won by this new left. Uh, but there have been a lot of achieving previous uh, attempts. Uh, actually, I, I've been reading recently a report that I, I, I published like three months before Podemos was born. Three months before. And it, it, it tried, it, I was trying to do like a general portrait of how all this conversation about making a new party uh, what's going on, and I, I mean, I, I know the thing, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm working every day in that, so I, I knew the thing, well, I, I, you know, wrote the whole thing, and there were like seven different parties, and I hadn't, I hadn't a clue about Podemos, three months before. Uh, and I'm, what I'm trying to say is that before Podemos, seven other parties tried. Uh, one of them ran into European elections as Podemos and didn't get anything because Podemos took it all. I mean, if you want to channel the 15 m movement, uh, it's one party, and that's not three parties. Uh, and uh, some other groups around Izquierda Unida, which is the Communist Party in Spain, some other uh, groups uh, tried to do. Uh, to do the, the same thing. And it was very difficult, it was very uh, problematic, even personally, for, for people. A um, lot of discussions, a lot of hidden corners, a lot of, I mean, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. Uh, one of the guys, um, 
This is my friend Guillermo Zapata. Uh, he 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 was an anarchist and now he's like a member of a <laughs> government in, in Madrid. He is he is showing uh, his in, in, in less than three years. Uh, he's showing the list of the bailout, is that? Uh, the, no, no, no. For the election day. Uh, his name is fifth, I think, or set of sixth in the list. A little bit more. Uh, and actually, he is one of the three, four, five persons who has been fighting for a local initiative in Madrid outside Podemos, uh, and previous to Podemos actually, uh, to try to go to the local elections. They, uh, they did an assembly in 2012, no, 13, uh, in order to test how strong was the feeling about doing a candidacy. So in the, main, in, the mid, in, in, the, in the same time that Podemos was looking in the European elections that were at that moment <coughs> four months uh, in time, they were saying, okay, not the European elections, but the local elections. So they were thinking about the next elections that, that, that we had recently, and in, they, they thought in one year and a half time, or less. So they began to do a lot of reunions and assemblies and different projects. And at the beginning it was quite disappointing I and mean, it was kind of, kind of awkward because they, they were like the core activists of the 15M movement, these brilliant people that they said that the people. And suddenly they had a, a crazy idea of demonstrations uh, all dressed in whatever young people participated, so they had this magic, this momentum of whatever. And I, I'm saying there, and people go there with me, uh, and they cannot work. Right? But they, they kind of depressed for a uh, uh, loss of months because all this support for the demonstration decreased. They didn't know how to impact the institutional level, and they began to talk about having a uh, a, a party, or a party which is not a party, uh, for the local elections, and they 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 didn't know how. There were a few. They were doing huge debates on democracy and renewal of the system, and people were like, okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. So they were like kind of sad, right? And in the meanwhile, Podemos were the the other way around. There were people that not having participated in that much in the movement, but having studied very well from, from the university, handcrafted like a way of channeling the energy through the big media to make it fully uh, hegemonic with their uh, political party in the center, which is Poem. Uh, it is important to know that in those debates, Pablo Iglesias, I told you, were participating, so he had not to wait to be invited to talk about Podemos, he was already on TV. So all the previous fame you need to do that, he already had it. So he actually put, again, his body and image at the service of that project, and he became a TV star. A TV star, like <laughs> the man of the year, and saying things that people uh, identify with. Yeah, you know? Identify with. Yeah, exactly. So he, he, he had a huge success. So there were two parallel processes. Grassrooted activists trying to make a lot of assemblies to gather a consensus to uh, you know have a common goals and that stuff, which are these people. And then a group of uh, uh, teachers uh, and experts trying to say, okay, uh, enough with that. I, I'm not participating in assemblies to decide what I'm doing. I'm going to do this. 
I am, t I am on TV, I'm going to uh, take advantage of that and let's see what happens. What happens, you know that, is that Podemos won five MPs in two months of campaigning for the European elections. Mm -hmm. That's what, more than 1.5 million votes. In two months? In two months. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and, 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 and I might be uh, used to internal debate. Right? Uh, in two months, they, they managed to, to do that. No, so we still have time. Here we think that we need around 14 years something. Like it's a good We'll edit the video too. Years. <laughs> so. Uh, Yes, uh, uh, it, yeah, but it was, I, I, I'm not, I don't know what's the context here, but it, there was like the moment the people needed so much that someone in TV said that and said, I'm going to elections. Because for, it was very funny, and for two years, uh, established politicians said, okay, okay, go for elections. I mean, you are all, all, all day protesting, saying to me what I have to do. Uh, you go to the Congress and make demonstrations uh, when I'm when I'm there. You go to TV and you say, "Oh, this has to be done. This has to be done." Okay, but go to the elections and, and let's see if your, your your ideas are better than mine. Go to elections, and they went, and, uh, and, and because they, they thought that they never uh, did that, and, and and so Podemos kind of asked uh, answer to that need of someone please can go for the elections with these ideas because otherwise everything is blockade for us so please someone and this or this someone well, making I an ask you one, one question i mean i can interrupt with questions yes, yes, yes. uh one thing is uh not quite clear to me you said that this methodology of discursive hegemony etc etc was very well studied was it studied and employed as studied at the beginning of the movement or at the point when the Podemos people decided to channel the movement into a party? When did you elaborate, develop and put in place the detailed methodology? Uh, it's again important to, to, to know that the origin of Podemos is not the origin of 15 the people participating in the, the hardcore Podemos, of course, a lot of people in Podemos are participating in 59, but I'm talking about these five, that five, because they're not more, five, six uh, person who thought and elaborated Podemos. So they are not coming from the same background. Uh, people from uh, the, in the hardcore of Podemos come from Latin American uh, left, uh, because they have been there working with Latin American governments yes. doing their PhDs and the stuff. But they are young, they are in their 30s. Mm -hmm. um, so they studied in Madrid and they went to Ecuador, Bolivia, uh, and, the, oh, and the elder ones, uh, Venezuela, and worked there as consultants or worked uh, or studied there in university as an exchange or whatever. So they are. Yeah, they, they have a lot of uh, elaboration of their speech about populism in the good way of uh, putting it. And uh, they, they have that background, mm -hmm. okay? La Clau, La Carne, and uh, And, and uh, the social, the d movement had a more, much more non-defined profile. Part of the not defining profile was intended by these hardcore activists who didn't want to push the movement to a place where people wouldn't go. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So some of them are uh, squatters, is that? Yeah. Uh, some of them are social democrats, some of them are like anarchists, and some of them are, they don't know what they do, and they know what they are, just participating in, in collective or whatever. I'm talking about the hardcore. Uh, but they didn't try to convince millions of people that uh, uh, 
and I don't know, anarchy is the best thing in the world because they knew there wasn't that the moment of that, and, and that they, they that wasn't, you know. Uh, so they intended 15 day movement intended not to be concrete in anything. Like they deliberately tried not to say, I I think that we should national uh, nationalize energy company. They didn't say that. Why? Because once they do that, the media take that and uses this boom, boom, boom until this matches you. So they try to say, okay, why, why we are a lot of people different here. Of course, I have my political agenda, but it's not the same as this one. But what we do have in common is that you are failing us as a politician, as a system. Uh, and actually, if you look at the system in Spain, you don't need to push very hard to to understand that things are not working. Even for a conservative point of view, people that uh, things don't work. I mean, it's, it's like state is failing. It's not about nationalizing or not nationalizing. It's even the thing that we have is not working. So 15 then was very broad. That's why 80% of people were agreed with that. Okay. Podemos at the beginning was much more uh, strong in their uh, speech, much more left uh, uh, influenced, by, but they uh, try not to say we are leftist, we are uh, inspired by uh, Latin American populism, or we, because they wanted again to copy the success of the framework of 15 f movements, which is we are the people, we are the bottom against the up, we are that, that kind of thing. The 99%, all that global new uh, storytelling for left. And uh, so, obviously, the 15M was much more chaotic and not. Uh, 15M is. This is hard to say. 15M is not a political subject. It, I mean, you cannot say 15M did this. No, because there, there were no decision-making places in 59. Mm -hmm. 59 was a moment, that moment, 2011. 59 is a framework, it's a way of understanding the problems that we have. And 59 is like a cultural shift, but it is no, hello, I am the 59. That doesn't exist. If someone comes here to Macedonia and say, yeah, well, I'm, I'm the 59, that is a, <laughs> fucking line, because there is no places where 15A make decisions, because it would have been impossible to agree. It's just something that happened that influenced the rest of the politics. So some of the activists <coughs> took their energy and uh, formed a party which was called the X party, Partido X, who was very technopolitic, uh, focused, and anti-corruption, and they, they did a very good job for a while, then they had some internal problems and collapsed, but they, they didn't call it 15M party, or we are the 15M, or nothing like that. And then you have other little uh, groups, for instance, against Rodrigo Rato, which was the International uh, Monetary Fund <coughs> director, which is Spanish, who, who was vice president of Spain, and they did a legal campaign against him, and now it's him in under, uh, he's been judged, he's in the courts uh, for a lot, of <coughs> a lot of shit he did, and three years ago, no one could have been, you know, yeah, if you tell me three years ago that Rodrigo Rato is going to be uh, judged, I, I, I had a believe it. Well, this little group of people in for the 15th uh, did this campaign, but they didn't try the whole movement to go with them, and, and they didn't say we are the 15th doing this. So they kind of spread in little groups, and one of the little groups was the local initiatives. Another little group was more into traditional left, and other little groups came into Polemos. So a uh, lot of different things came out of that common ground, right?